Grr, matey. We're off to Survivor of Pearl Islands. This will be the ranking of all the best players in the first seven seasons. So we are continuing our series of ranking the greatest Survivor players of all time, one season at a time. We're up to season seven now. We're going to give a shout out to those players from Pearl Islands who are contenders for our final list, which is going to be a list of the top 50 greatest players of all time. We are only including their seasons as well. So obviously Pearl Islands has uh, four returnees. We're not going. To, we're not talking about any of their future seasons where they come back. It'll just be based on their performance during this season. And when we get to their returning seasons, we will then talk about that and put that into their rankings. And either they will go up or down, depending on how they do in their returning season. So we've got Pearl Islands. First of all, just a quick mention to Morgan. I don't hold it against Andrew Savage as a bad move that he wasn't able to win over Lil at the merge. Um, but he just, yeah, none of the Morgans were really able to come up with any really good moves. I mean, the fact that Tijuana, Rhino, Rhino, <laughs> and Savage all were never in danger after three Tribal Councils pre-merge, definitely really, really good. But yeah, they weren't able to really do anything after that. Uh, Rhino's scrambling at the final nine was great as well. Just want to give that a shout out as well. But the problem is, like Fair Play said, we can do that move. We just don't need you to do it. It's very similar to Boston Rob in Marquesas. Rob, I think, did a lot to get the ball moving for the fall of the row two four and for everyone else to sort of come together to take them down. But yeah, obviously, Nalia and Pascal realized they did not need Rob to do that. And why not just let him get voted off and then you can get a uh, ticket to the final five rather than the final six. Uh, definitely a good move. And it was a good move by John, Burton, Lil, uh, Tijuana and Dara to wait until uh, the final eight. So we'll be focusing on them. Uh, quick shout out to Trish as well. I thought Trish and John got a bit unlucky with their failed usurpation, usurping of Rupert in the game in, in the pre-merge. But it was a big move and a move we're going to talk about a lot later on. So the standouts from... So going through to the final... Eight. Uh, the big move that real, the biggest move in the game at that point was voting off Rupert. I always give a lot of credit to people who are voted off just because they're such a big threat. Uh, a lot of people like to leave the game and say they were voted off because they're a big threat, and I think a lot of people who voted them off will then tell them they were voted off because they were a big threat because it's a nice thing to say, and they won't say anything else. It's like, well, why correct them? You know, you know. I think there's loads of Survivor players out there who think they were voted off <laughs> because they were a big threat. Rupert in Pearl Islands was voted off because he was a big threat. He was fantastic at challenges. Uh, him and Burton were definitely the two standouts of the, uh, throughout the whole season, but especially down to the final eight. And, uh, yeah, a good move to get rid of Rupert at that point. Uh, but I don't give people that much credit for it. I mean, it's it's a fairly obvious move. Uh, but I think continuing throughout the game, the work that John and Burton did to keep Lil on their side for as long as they did. Lil did not obviously stay on their side. But for as long as they did, uh, it was really admirable. Uh, we get to the next episode with Johnny Fairplay's Dead Grandma Lie, which was just one of the most outside-the-box strategies ever. Uh, he did use it strategically, although I don't know if it really did anything. Uh, obviously, later on in that episode, where he the whole Dead Grandma scene at the reward challenge, later on you get a scene where John is swearing on his grandma <laughs> to Krista and Sandra. Uh, saying that, no, I will vote with you guys. We'll, we'll join together again. Uh, Drake strong and vote off Tawana in this vote. Which is what happened. And I think Sandra and Krista, frankly, I think they would have gone with that vote anyway because Krista and Sandra were suddenly found themselves on the bottom after Rupert was blindsided. So they would have taken any offer at that point. And I don't think John really needed to lean on the crutch of, you know, <laughs> a certain grandmother who may or may not have been dead at that point. Uh, Sandra, for one, didn't believe it anyway, and she stated after the game that she did never believed it. Uh, and yeah, so but she still went along with John's vote, obviously. So, and John really, really good through the rest of the game. Uh, played a really, really strong game. Uh, again, they did lose control at the final five when the other three women who were left in the game teamed up to vote off Burton, but. Yeah, I mean, John did play a fantastic game early on. Also, positioning himself on the on the Drake tribe as his swing vote was really good. The one downside with John is the failed, you know, uh, taking out of Rupert at, uh, at during the pre-merge rather than at the final eight when it did work. 
yeah, they, they believed Sandra, and Sandra was not on their side, and that was one crucial vote that him and Trish needed. Theoretically, he could have been voted off at that tribal, and after that, he did put himself in a lot of hot water because he was suddenly on the outs of the Drake tribe. Uh, but overall, I thought John played a fantastic game. He did a lot in the game. Uh, he really played the game very aggressively from a strategic point of view. I think him, and along with Rob Sassanino in Amazon, who is... Uh, I've basically written down my rankings from the first six seasons down below. Rob Sassanino is number one, uh, and put in the comments as well to give an idea. But the failed, and the fact that him and John have, had done the most strategy and pulled off the most big moves and the most game-changing moves of anyone in the first seven seasons, uh, big positive in their column, but I'm going to knock Johnny Fairplay down a few more places to Rob, so Fairplay is not not quite with Rob. I've got Rob Sessonino at one. I've still got Tina at two. I think she didn't have to do much, but she did run Australian out, the Australian Outback uh, strategically and was fantastic. Uh, a huge jury threat and uh, ended up in the end together with the only other person who could have been close to beating her, but she, she still beat Colby at the end, which is saying a lot. Uh, and then Richard, the original winner, uh, the original survivor strategist uh, is number three. I'm going to put Fair Play at four. I'm going to put Fair Play above Teresa. Um, I thought Teresa played a fantastic game, but again, you look at like what Fair Play did and what Teresa did. Fair Play did a lot more strategizing. Teresa just had an immensely great social game, and the random cast vote for Lex also was a <laughs> really really good move in hindsight that bore a lot of that almost turned the game in her favor. Uh, for two votes, actually, in the final nine and the final eight. It had a really, really big ripple effect. But we're not talking about that now. We're talking about Pearl Islands. Fair play, number four. Uh, the other player in contention, again, I do like Burton. <clears throat> I want to just give a shout-out to Burton really quick. I know he was voted off twice. <laughs> but he, when he went to Rupert initially and put forth the idea that we should throw a challenge because we need to get rid of some of the weaker people because they're just going to gang up on us as soon as they can, possibly, probably as soon as the merge hits. Uh, it was a really good move. And Rupert, he obviously, though, didn't read Rupert correctly because Rupert immediately swore vengeance on Burton and said if he was a real pirate, he'd already be dead. I'm like, okay, Rupert, calm down. But, uh, yeah, Burton ended up um, burying his game at that moment, even though it was a really good strategic move and most people would have gone for it. But, unfortunately, Rupert is not most people. Uh, but I do want to give, yeah, Burton a bit of a shout out again. He was voted off because he was, I think, I think because he was a big threat, uh, both times. Uh, and again, I know that Johnny Fairplay did a lot of the strategic legwork for Burton to try and keep him in the game as long as possible, especially after Rupert was voted off. Uh, and we can get to that as far as like, should Burton actually have blindsided Rupert when he did at the final eight? Should he have tried to keep Rupert around for as long as possible? Like, for me, I would have waited one more vote. Um, but one more vote may not have made that much of a difference. But I think if you're Burton, you need Rupert around. And Rupert also needs Burton around. Because you need someone else who's an obviously big challenge threat, which they were the two big challenge threats, uh, after, especially after Savage and, and Rhino went out of the game. So I'll give Burton, Burton a lot of credit for that move. I do think it's really smart thinking. I think he had a lot of smart ideas. Um, I think he weighed, he, the way he played coming back into the game was perfect as well. Uh, but again, he was voted off twice and didn't do anything too amazing. And also, I don't think his social game was that great. I think it was, I think it was very good, but I think he was pretty well liked out there. Uh, he probably could have beaten most people at the end, I think, but... Yeah, um, and then we've got Sandra, who also, despite not having a great social game throughout the game, uh, the one person who I think really didn't like Sandra much was Tijuana. And yeah, she lost Tijuana's vote, but she still got every other vote in the final trial council. So, just want to give Sandra a bit of a shout-out. Obviously, uh, lying point-blank to Trish and John and letting them think the Rupert blindside could work when it certainly did not. Uh certainly was a, was a nice move on her part. The thing that works against Sandra, though, is that she seemingly was going to go home if Drake had lost that first immunity challenge. And it was close. It was real close. Drake won by a nose after coming from behind right at the end. And uh, Sandra was spared. 
Uh, but also, seeing that first episode, Sandra was amazing in the Panamanian village. I don't know whether that counts as a challenge. It kind of is a, a, a huge, epic, grand reward challenge in a way. One of the best challenge challenge performances ever from Sandra, I think. The, how she managed to get so much food and so much stuff uh, just from a gold necklace <laughs> was absolutely amazing. I don't know if it counts as a challenge, but challenge beast, Sandra Diaz Twine. You heard it here first. <laughs> but no, the rest of the season proved that she was not so much of a challenge beast at all. Um, I think she comes off pretty loud and aggressive on, on TV, but I think she's more well-liked than that. Um, I think once people actually get to know her more, I think people like her a lot more. Uh, yeah, the Rupert Blindside, not knowing about that was odd. I've always had a theory with Sandra, though. Let me know if this is crazy, that Sandra was happy for Rupert to get voted off and she just pretended. Because she voted for John in that vote. Like, she just threw away a vote. Like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you can you can say that, like, she thought she already had enough numbers where she could afford to throw away a vote and just thought, you know what, let's just say F you to John and give him a vote. That might be what happened as well. I think that's probably what happened. But, yeah, I mean, if she, if she was intentionally happy to get rid of Rupert, that's fine. Because I think, yeah... It did work out well for her, though, in the end, but I don't give her credit for that. That's just a theory I've got, <laughs> that she may have been happy for Rupert to go anyway. Um, then the next episode, pulling Tawana into the bushes to when they, when she's trying to rally the troops against John and Burton, pulling Tawana into the bushes to, let, to overhear a conversation between John and Burton about who's going to the final three and that it is not going to be Tawana. Um, it's going to be the two of them and Lil, was such a good move. You don't see that on Survivor ever, really. Like, people actually like going, look, I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to... I know they're talking about it now. Get over here. Let's hide in the bushes and let's eavesdrop. Such a good move. <laughs> it was really, really unique. Um, I don't know if I've seen that in, in any other Survivor. Um, and then also the uh, going to throw out Rupert's fish and letting Krista take the blame for it was pretty... <laughs> diabolical but pretty pretty brilliant as well although that was i think kind of a bit of an accident but hey sand you can say sandra got a bit lucky with that one but sandra also denied it very well she was like no it wasn't me i was yelling at you the whole time and it's like yeah she was yelling at burton the whole time so it's yeah she actually handled that very well <laughs> and it worked out quite well for her in the end and then obviously everything towards the end where she finally did manage to rally the women together to take out Burton at the final five. I think she had more to do with that than Dara or Lil did. Uh, I think she was the ringleader of that trio. And then obviously going to the end, I just want to give a shout out to why Lil picked Sandra to go to the end with her and not John. Because Sandra and John are the two, in my opinion, the two best players of Pearl Islands. And we're kind of comparing their games here. Uh, it was because Lil said that she was worried what would happen to John if he actually won, which John would have if he went to the end with Lil as well. Uh, it's definitely, and that's why she took Sandra. Sandra's also a mum and that sort of thing, so I think Lil was in the Kim Johnson from Survivor Africa situation where she kind of knew she was going to lose to either one of them and just thought, well, who would I rather see win? And it turns out it was Sandra in the end. Um... Sandra's final trouble council speech was great too. I, at that point, we don't have that many final troubles, tro uh, final trouble councils to have watched, and we haven't really seen that many great ones either. Uh, for what it's worth, Kim Johnson actually had a really good one, even though she never really had a chance to win. And Lil in this season too, I actually thought was really good in the final trouble council. <laughs> a lot of the older women are, are quite good in the final trouble council, even if they don't end up winning. Uh, but I thought Sandra was really good. This is probably, together, Sandra and Lil, the best final trouble council performance of two finalists in the, in a season. I thought they were really, really solid. Uh, so yeah, give Sandra a lot of credit for that, but I do put Sandra several rungs down. I think Sandra gets kept around, gets lucky, obviously, early on that Drake are able to win the first and second and third challenge to the point where challenge strength is not something they care about by the time they finally go to trouble council. Um, and yeah, I know people don't talk about the challenges that much and it's just like, well, but it is a part of the game. And if you're perceived as being weak early on, you really are at a detriment and you may risk getting voted off. And I think that's something that worked out well for Sandra in her two winning seasons is that her tribe didn't really go to trouble council much early on and it has been lucky for her. But let's focus on Pearl Islands. 
Uh, and then, yeah, I think she ends up going further because she's seen as less of a threat. I think Krista was also a pretty good shield because Krista wasn't very well liked by the Morgans. So I think if they were going to pick Krista or Sandra to vote off, which they did at the final six, uh, it was always going to be Krista because it's like, oh, we don't really like Krista much. So, yeah, having Krista and Rupert there as like two shields in different ways was a really, really good worked out really well for Sandra. One thing I also knocked Sandra down for is when, just really quickly, they were at just before the merge, uh, just before the Sean vote off at Drake, they, the three of them, you know, Sandra, Rupert and Krista are joking around about like, should we get them to plead their case and tell us why they deserve to be here? I thought they were joking around, but then they actually did it. And it's like, well, whoever stays and whoever doesn't get voted off, in this case it was John, is not going to be loyal to you guys at all. And sure enough, at the final eight, he sure certainly wasn't. So, yeah, that was a that was a terrible move. I, that was true, like shocking. All three of them, like really, really bad gameplay. You're like you do know that one of these guys is going to stick around, right? <laughs> and then going to backstab you at, at the final eight. So yeah, Sandra, I, I put down a bit lower. Uh, I chucked Sandra. I, I looked at like. Lex is always the interesting one because I think Lex also played a really aggressive game. Actually, I'm saying that Fair Play and Rob Sessanino played really aggressive, the most aggressive games of anyone in the first seven seasons. I think the other one is probably uh, Lex, although Lex didn't have quite as much success, even though he also made the final three. Uh, but Lex often put him, dug himself into a hole and then had to kind of dig his way out by uh, often just winning immunities or bringing Brandon over to his side. <laughs> Uh, overall with the rankings, I'll put Sandra just... Yeah, I'll put Sandra just below Vesepia. I think the one thing Sandra has going for her over Vesepia is that she was better in the final tribal council. Um, but I think Vesepia is better at the under-the-radar game than Sandra is. Um, and just, just getting to the end, pumping other people up, and yeah. Vesepia had a bit more to overcome too. She went to more tribal councils than Sandra did, I believe. So, yeah, she she was had a fair bit to do. Um... So I'll put her, I'll put Sandra just behind the sepia. Oh, Lex is a tough one. Lex is a tough one because you're looking at someone else who was quite a big jury threat, but very different player. Obviously, Lex was way out in front. He was the main player of Africa, um, and yeah, dug himself some holes, but did dig his way out by winning challenges, bring Brandon onto his side. I'm gonna put put Lex above Sandra. So Sandra to me, so basically the rankings at the moment, you've got 